Hello there folks and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. And welcome back to volume three of Am I a Chap? The series on this channel where gentlemen, chaps, send me their images for review. I will look at the images and I will give you some observations. Now, the observations are not critical the goal here is to either learn from the gentleman's fabulous ensembles of clothing or for me to perhaps pass on some recommendations which may have improved the look if they'd done it slightly differently using my own personal knowledge and my own taste. So by no means is this designed to be expert testimony. This is just my subjective view on the, on the images that people have sent me. And I'm delighted if you wish to send me an image, you can find the email address to do so in the About Me section on the main Chaps Guide YouTube page. So today we have three gentlemen who have heroically sent on their images that I'm going to review today. There are some corkers. Not all are perfect. I can give some observations, but certainly there's some lessons for us all to learn here. So let us begin. Right then, let's crack on, shall we? Our first chap of the day is George, and I will read you what George has sent me. So he says, uh, hello, I'm from Colombia. I am 45, I've always loved classic men's style. I started dressing, uh, dressing classically since around the age of 37. It's a never ending journey. Uh, it's an everyday hobby, even on weekends. And he sent us two images, um, one of which reclining in a chair, which shows more of the, the whole body, and one just a little bit of his upper body, which I think allows us to get the idea. Um, he tells us he likes wearing ties and cravats interchangeably during the week, tends to wear cravat only on the weekend. Um, recently fallen in love with the Windsor knot, even though he knows it's not one of James Bond's favorites. Okay, good point. Um, I'm a cravat lover myself. It's not to everybody's taste, that's for sure. But let's have a look at the images, George, that you've sent us and we shall see. Okay, so there's two images, the first of which shows you reclining in a chair with a friend. And I think that's probably the best for us to discuss here. Now, ordinarily, I would start from the ground up, but you were very strategically cut out your footwear just in the borders of the image. So I can't tell you um, any comments about your shoes, but I can draw some assumptions from what I can see. And I'm gonna start from the ground up. Um, obviously. So shoes, I can't see them, but I'm going to make an inference here that the perfect shoe for the garment that you're wearing, this sort of casual ensemble of, you know, easy men's style, I would suggest, would be a loafer. Um, worn sockless, or not really sockless, is it, you know, you should be wearing uh, an invisible sock to make sure that uh, that sock captures the perspiration, which would otherwise soil your shoe and cause bacteria to build up and of course create an unpleasant odors within the footwear. So a nice brown loafer, I think. I can't see what you're wearing, but that's what I would like to have seen if you were wearing it. And when it comes to the slacks, I can see that you've got a light blue um, casual trouser. I can't again see exactly what it is. I can only tell that there is no central crease running down the trousers. So I'm gonna make the assumption it's a chino, which is a perfect casual relaxation pair of trousers for a gentleman. I'm wearing a pair myself right now, as I often am, unless I'm in a more formal situation. And this is a perfect blend uh, as to what you're wearing here today. Because as we look up the body, we can see that you're wearing a dress shirt, uh, open at the neck, and it is a pink shirt. Now, I love pink when it comes to gentleman's style. I think it's a way overlooked color. Lots of men think that it is feminine in some way or another, but actually it's not. Pink for the longest time had been considered one of the colors which uh, referred to a gentleman, a man, because red used to be the male color always has been through history. You know, British soldiers particularly wore red tunics, and this was the embodiment of red-blooded masculinity. And younger men, yet to achieve adulthood, they wore pink to delineate the fact they were not yet fully mature. 
to wear red. And all of that time, pink used to be the male colour. But in the 1950s, it was subverted. Uh, when um, Dwight Eisenhower's wife wore a pink ball gown to his inauguration. And as a consequence, it was broadly carried in the mass media and the determination was made, didn't she look great in pink? And from that point on, pink became slowly but surely, but now firmly embedded as the acknowledged color of femininity. But for men in the modern era, pink is a perfect shirt color because it goes with pretty much everything. Not only that, but you know, it doesn't show up uh, marks or dirt or perspiration in the way that a white shirt might. And it's a little bit more interesting, isn't it? Because everybody wears white or blue, pink just gives you a bit of pizzazz. And I can see here that that's a nice uh, dress shirt because I can see you're wearing a French cuff and you're taking the opportunity to have a little bit extra of an accessory on display in that lovely cuff link that we can see there. So great stuff, I'm loving the shirt. And the blazer, navy blazer, what more can a man have in his wardrobe than the universal, uh, I call it the Swiss army garment, you know, because the blazer is so, so versatile. And in this sort of look, you've nailed it. Uh, and to finish it off, the cherry on the cake, of course, is the cravat worn at the neck. I think it's a, a paisley pattern, which is perfect. And uh, married with that, I think we can just see it in your um, breast pocket, a pocket square made out in pink, which is that lovely match. Not exact match, of course. We don't want to exactly match our shirt or our tie with our pocket square. It's a complementary match, maybe roughly the same color, or the same color with a different pattern or a different texture, but a little bit of chaos going there in the pocket square. I really like the look that you've pulled off here, George. It is so classically elegant and perfect for a gentleman as you are from a warm country such as Colombia. Uh, it just looks just right, doesn't it, for, for casually loafing around. Um, what can I say? Yeah, an excellent, and I've made some notes, an excellently executed look. Uh, if you wanted to formalize that garment, all you'd need to do is throw on a tie with the shirt and you're ready to go to work. You know, so versatility in an outfit is perfect. So thank you so much for sending the images in. In your other image, I think you've just nailed home the fact that you know how to dress well, because uh, there we see most likely a suit jacket with a um, red tie with a paisley uh, pattern within it, nicely spread white collar, pink pocket square, I don't know whether the pink is a perfect match there because it's arguing somewhat with the tie because they're both members of the red family in a way, but it's looking good and the sunglasses. Sir, you are chap, absolutely, no doubt. Thanks for sending the image in. Now our next gentleman, the, the meat in our sandwich, so to speak, in the middle, is a gentleman called Chris. Now, I'm, I, Chris doesn't state his nationality, but I'm gonna draw the assumption that he is British, maybe English, because the style is oozing English country gentleman here. And he sent an image uh, which comes from his youngest sister's wedding. So he's dressed somewhat formally, which is nice to see. And as we can see from the image, Chris has gone for what I would describe as a country gentleman's theme to his outfit uh, for this most formal of opportunities, a wedding day. Of course it is. And as ever, let us start from the ground up and I'll give my observations as I go along um, about how I perhaps would have changed things. So looking at the ground, we can see Chris is wearing um, a pair of shoes, brown in color, mid-brown. Uh, impossible to tell exactly, but they appear to be a plain brown shoe. Um, and yeah, they're brown, what can I say? It goes well with the other colors of the outfit, certainly your um, sports coat and the waistcoat, the brown fits in with them. What I would say about the shoe, uh, brown is not a color normally associated with wedding attire, obviously. Most people would go very, very formal. I wore a white tie on my wedding day all those years ago, but brown uh, suggests there's an informality and perhaps a casuality about the wedding, which is a lovely way to get the feeling going. So it's interesting to see brown at a wedding, but if I were to wear a brown shoe, um, you've gone for a plain shoe. Maybe uh, um, I would suggest it's a Gibson style or possibly a hole cut. But for me, wearing a plain brown shoe is an opportunity lost. I've said this before. I, with all of my brown shoes, I like to have some broguing on display Be for a number of reasons. Firstly, it makes the shoe 
more interesting. That broguing pattern, it just brings something to the party. Whereas the plain brown, it shows up the creases. Of course, as one walks along, the shoe will crease, the leather will crease. The broguing distracts from that as well. So it makes the shoe look better over the many years, hopefully, that you will own it if you've invested in a decent pair of shoes. And of course, it brings some texture to your clothing as well. Certainly makes a shoe look more country-like. So definitely, I would have opted for a brown brogue, either a full brogue, a half brogue, or a quarter brogue. You know, if whatever is something which you would consider to be open to. So that's what I would have done slightly differently. Moving up the body, we see that you're wearing a pair of grey trousers. Now, I see what you've done, all right? Grey is the catch-all colour. It goes with everything, doesn't it? And that's why it is so popular in men's wardrobes, because you can wear it with, um, you know, a white shirt, a blue shirt, a pink shirt, any variation of those colours or match or mixture of those colours. You can wear it with brown shoes quite easily. You can wear it with black shoes. But I ask myself, is it appropriate for the outfit that you're wearing here today? Because I suspect that you've had those trousers and they match the outfit, they look okay, they go with it, but they're not a perfect fit, I would say. And I don't mean fit as in they fit your body, the colour. Now, if I was going to be going to a wedding, I wouldn't be going for a pair of grey slacks. I would throw caution to the wind and you've got a lovely, what appears to be a yellow style or okra coloured waistcoat there what a, and you've brought some some passion and some colour to your uniform uniform your your clothing i would have gone full out and added some colour to the trousers as well maybe a red or a pink or something of that nature a green something to match well or marry with the sports coat that you're wearing i think gray was the easy option. Maybe you already had those trousers in the wardrobe and uh, you know that's why you wore them that day. I think you could have put a bit more effort in there, sir, for sure. Uh, could have spent more time on the iron as well. Not much of a crease going on in those trousers. So if you're going to wear uh, a pair of trousers, make sure they've had a good pressing, I would suggest. And on that note, talking about the finishing of one's garmentry, the shoes. Lovely pair of shoes, they do match, although I've made an observation, I think other things could have helped. But what about a mirror shine on those shoes? Would it have brought an entirely different dimension to the outfit? If you'd brought those shoes up to a sparkling shine, I think it wouldn't matter what type of shoe they were, that's what, have, what would have drawn the eye rather than the shoe itself. So moving on up the body, um, let's look at the waistcoat. I love it. It is, for me, the signature item in this ensemble of clothing that you're wearing. Lovely bit of colour, unusual, sort of a pastel yellow, perhaps hard to tell from the image, but yet it works for me. It brings pizzazz to the wedding because in a wedding day, you can get away with wearing things you wouldn't ordinarily wear. And it works well. And not only that, but it goes well with the sports coat you're wearing, which appears to be a tweed or uh, some sort of check uh, sports coat in brown. I can just about make out some checking in the, in the fabric, maybe some additional color in there, hard to tell from the image, but that said, it works beautifully with the waistcoat. You've got a blue, uh, what appears to be a blue shirt on, dress shirt, French cuff, probably a cuff link going on there as well. Uh, it all marries together rather well. Now, you're wearing um, some sort of, uh, sort of wedding cravat uh, with a uh, boutonniere or corsage on your lapel, and it goes very nicely with the pocket square you have. It really ties it all together. So I think you've done a pretty good show here for your younger sister's wedding. As I say, the only thing, the thing which I would change, the glaring thing for me, the slacks. It's a wedding day, sir. This is the day to put greys away and go nuts with the colour. You could have got away with anything. Even a khaki trouser or an ochre, burnt ochre perhaps, um, lovely chino perhaps, again, it would have worked perfectly. Thank you for sending the image in, Chris. Okay, so our final gentleman today is a bit of a corker. I'm looking forward to this one. We have received uh, an image from Amic, uh, and Amic hails from Columbus, Ohio, a state in the US I don't believe I've been to. Uh, Travelled extensively in America, it's one of my favourite countries to journey around, meet people and indulge myself in the culture, but don't believe I've been to Ohio as yet. Definitely on my list of places to go to. Now Amic has sent me um, a covering letter with 
some fantastic explanation of the clothing that he's wearing. Uh, and he explains that this was his church outfit on a Sunday morning, I presume. And um, he attempts to buy as many of his clothes as possible from his country of origin. So from the United States, which is great, great, very um, positive way to support your own artisan clothing and cobblers and things like that from your own country. Fully advocate that. Of course, it's easy for me to say that because I live in the UK, which is, you know, sartorially one of the um, sort of, uh, you know, point zero for many of clothes, um, men's clothing, shoes and things like that. But in the States, it's also quite possible to do so too. Uh, and, you know, I can see that, well, let's have a look at the image of Amic. And as you can see, um, Amic has got a three-piece suit for us on display here today. So my initial observation is a very well executed look of a smart man in a smart suit. It is fair to say here, Amic, um, you have an advantage, don't you? A natural genetic advantage, because I'm gonna, it's impossible for me to tell because of the perspective, but you appear to be a man of height. I'm gonna guess you're at least six feet tall from the image I can see here. And you have a frame which suggests to me that you're a man who keeps yourself in shape, maybe quite athletic. And yeah, you, you, you're fortunate there. That is not the same gift that everybody is dealt from the deck. So when you put clothes on, particularly a suit, a suit is always going to, to flatter a gentleman. But if in the first instance, that gentleman, gentleman has got a good frame, they look even better. And this suit really fits you rather well. Um, so what are you wearing? Well, let's start from the ground up. So Amic has um, quite uh, helpfully told me that he is wearing a pair of uh, Alan Edmonds Strand shoes, which are in effect um, a semi-brogue, a half-brogue shoe. So broguing across the medallion of the shoe and around the sort of uh, the, the body of the shoe, adding texture and interest. And he also goes as far to tell me that um, he purchased these uh, from eBay. So well done. I've been saying this so many times. There is no need to go out and blow hundreds and hundreds of pounds on a top end pair of you know uh, Goodyear welted shoes if you are prepared to shop around and go on the auction sites you can make some amazing killings on there get some fantastic deals Alan Edmonds of course is a prolific shoe in the United States they're not available in the UK we've got more than enough manufacturers here to choose from but Alan Edmonds, of course, is the shoe of choice for most uh, well-dressed men in America until you get up into the higher echelons. And the Strand is one of my all-time favorites of their models because it's got good, robust, good you welted uh, construction. It comes in some great colors. I particularly love their chili color because I love oxbloods and reds in my footwear. And, you know, they look great in the broguing. And you have actually, and he mentions here, uh, Ahmed does in his uh, email, that he went um, to the extent of providing or creating that um, patinering on the toe cap of the shoe to make the shoe look interesting. And I can't make any observation about that. The shoes look great. You've got a good shine on them. Uh, that antiquing effect by the, created by the patina makes them look superb. If I was going to wear a pair of shoes out in an ensemble like this, this is what I'd be wearing. You've nailed it. Let's move up the body. Let's look at the trousers. So we've got a three-piece suit in a grey colour. Um, I believe it's a charcoal colour and he tells us it's a Articles of Style uh, charcoal puppy tooth fresco suit. So good quality suit and the trousers are good. I can see you've got a good crease. We've talked about a crease earlier. If you're going to wear a pair of trousers, put the bloody iron on them before you wear them. Let's do the most with the material that we're wearing out that day. And you've done that. You've got a good crease going on with the shoe, uh, with the trouser rather. The only thing I would say observationally is that the break of that trouser appears to be uh, needing alteration, all right? You've got some rucking or some bunching of the trouser at the ankle. I can understand why the trousers are tapered. They're a close-fitting trouser, uh, and as a consequence of that, there's no sort of gaping over the lacing system of the shoe. Might often shoes, uh, trousers will do that, but you, with a pair of trousers which are so finely um, ta tapered and so closely cutting to the leg, you need to get the break just right. So I would suggest possibly going to the tailor and maybe having, I don't know, an inch, 
off that trouser, see what it looks like, take the advice of a professional seamstress or a tailor, and they will be able to cut that perfectly for you. Let's move up the body. Let's look at the top half. Now, um, you're wearing a shirt, and you've gone to the trouble of telling me it's an Articles of Style Bengal striped shirt in khaki with a tan collar. Looks good. Um, for the for the business formal or the church formal as you are here, my personal preference, I'm not a big fan of stripes on shirts. You will rarely ever see me wearing a striped shirt here because I love a blank canvas for my tie, all right? And um, for me, white or light blue is the way to go. Pink, if I'm feeling a little bit frivolous. But yeah, this works nicely because the stripes are muted, all right? They're subdued. They're many Bengal stripes you'll find are reds and dark blues. They are forcing that uh, color in your face. And it's difficult then to marry a tie with that shirt because the shirt is screaming for attention. And of course, that's the tie's job. Remember, the tie is often the star of the outfit because it brings the colour, the texture and the pattern. And if your shirt's trying to do the same thing, there'll be a conflict. But here, your shirt is worked well, it is fair to say. It's not screaming for attention. It works well with the tie that you're wearing there. And um, yeah, it's a nice tie, striped tie, regimental tie or club tie as you might call it in the US. And it marries very nicely. You've got brown shoes on, so you've got elements of brown within that tie. And um, you've said, I think there's khaki and tan color represented in the shirt. Again, that tie is gonna be a lovely addition to that. Um, Talking about that shirt, I can see that you've got it fitting just about right on the sleeves as well. Uh, whereas, you know, we're always looking for no more than half an inch protruding from our, uh, our jacket or coat sleeves when we're stood upright. All right, so any more than that, and it's gonna look like your jacket sleeves are too short, and it, no sleeve at all, none of your shirt sleeve exposed at all will kind of suggest that your jacket sleeves are too long. So we're always just looking for that little flash of the shirt color. And I can see you've got it just right. A quarter to a half an inch is the goal. Um, I often don't because I wear chunky watch, but quarter to a half an inch is what we're aiming for. And it looks spot on. The waistcoat you're wearing fits well. Bottom button undone in the classic sartorial style. You've got it just right. The jacket or the coat that you're wearing as i said a very good fit uh, notch lapels it screams smart stylish gentleman let's talk about your accessories because there are a few things i would like to talk about your grooming spot on clean shaven man a rarity in the modern world today and i like to see a man who's taken the time to put a razor to his face it suggests cleanliness crispness and you know, nothing to hide. Looks good, I like a clean shaven man. Your sunglasses, um, clearly it's a warm sunny day. They are a well compliment to your face. Looks good indeed. Pocket square. The white pocket square protruding about a half an inch above the line of the breast pocket. Um, in the president style or the straight style, it's perfect. You could wear that pocket square in any situation. On your wedding day, to church, to court, to the office, or just being stylish in a metropolitan large city. Uh, so yeah, you cannot fault the straight white pocket square. I noticed that um, the late great Duke of Edinburgh, one of the best dressed man in all of history, always wore a straight folded pocket square in his uh, jacket pockets. And if it was good enough for the Duke, it's good enough for anybody. But there's one little thing which I would like to point out, which I was impressed to see. And that is, sir, that you are wearing a US flag in your lapel, in the buttonhole of the left-hand side of your lapel. I mention this because the devil is in the detail when it comes to the fine elements of being a well-dressed man and intentionally stylish man. And it's little things like always having a lapel badge which says something about you. Now I'm not wearing one myself, it's a summer jacket, so I might often wear a boutonniere with this jacket from time to time, but I, I normally will have a little lapel badge because it's just the final touch. It is the cherry on the cake which says a little bit something about you. And here, by wearing the US flag, you're telling us more than one thing, aren't you? You're telling us that you subscribe to that mindset of the devil is in the detail. 
And something more important, which I associate with entirely, you're a patriot. And there is nothing to be ashamed or um, embarrassed about in displaying your national flag about your clothing. Now, in, in my country, in the United Kingdom, there has been a reluctance for people to um, maybe wear um, their national flag on their clothing in the manner that you are in the US. Uh, in many cases, uh, you know, the national flag of the UK is absent. You might walk through a town, you might not see the Union flag, the Union Jack often called, um, because people we're a little bit reluctant to put it in, you know, out in public, throw it in people's faces. It's just our subdued manners here in the UK. I actually love the fact in the US, you revel in your national identity and you love displaying symbols of your patriotism. Now I noticed from your, uh, your accompanying letter that you tell me that um, you're carrying in your pocket, you went to the detail of telling me in your pocket, you carry a pocket knife issued while I was in the Navy. And that told me immediately I could understand fully why you're wearing that national flag. You're a member, former member of your armed forces. And of course, those people who have served under the colors of their country, they often feel an enhanced sense of pride and association with their national identity. So I fully understand now why you're wearing that flag. And I, uh, I can say nothing, but I congratulate you on so doing, sir. It's wonderful to see. I wish we would see that more often in my own country particularly because the Union flag is a beautifully symmetric and colorful flag, which has a lot of resonance, you know, it's a very beautiful flag. Uh, I wish we wore ours more, but of course the old stars and stripes, the old glory looks great on your suit. So overall, I think, again, we've been so lucky today. We've some chaps here today who have truly delivered some great executions on being intentionally well-dressed men. So Amic, you have really pulled it off today. I think the ensemble of clothing you're wearing is perfect because of its versatility. You could be, you know, walking around the streets of London. You could be going to church. You could be going to the office. You could be having an audience with the Queen. Clothing like this, in this manner, is perfect for any such occasion. My only slight observation, and you knew there was an observation coming, it wouldn't be much of a review if I just gushed over your clothing. When I first saw this image, I thought to myself, federal agent, all right? Somebody who works for a government agency, law enforcement, intelligence, whatever, because that is exactly how I picture somebody in that line of work dressing. That level of smartness, the sunglasses, the club tie, the shiny shoe. Um, what I would have done differently is the tiniest of things, all right? Just to change up the absolute corporacy of your outfit and just add a little bit of chaos in there. I would have worn a pocket square in a puff pattern, which would have broken up the lines and just, uh, you know, just puff style, just not a straight line, but a bit of a puff. And I think I would have gone for a tie with a bit of more texture, maybe a bit more pattern, just to break that corporate look that you've got going on there. There is nothing wrong with it. I think it's great, as I've said, but, that would have been my inkling, just to change it up a little so that I looked a little bit left of center because this is a very conformist outfit that you're wearing. So to add a slightly unusual tie or maybe a pocket square with some irregular pattern to its display might have made the slightest bit of difference which would have altered the look. But please, that's just my thoughts. So gentlemen, there we are. Those are our three heroes today. So my thanks to George, Chris and Amic, who I think absolutely you are chaps. And I am more than happy to testify to that in any court of law, I assure you. If you would like to um, send an image in for me to review it, maybe give you my observations, don't forget. Emails in the About Us box on the main YouTube page. Drop me that email. If you're gonna send me an image, Try and send me a full image, you know, so I can see the shoes and the whole outfit that you're wearing because half an image, you're only going to get half a review. Um, so thank you so much for participating in Am I a Chap? It's been a pleasure to look at your clothing, to review what I think, and also to learn from the, your individual styles from all different parts of the world here. Um, three different continents in the three different gentlemen we have seen today. 
So if you have enjoyed the video, you know the drill, thumbs up, click the subscribe button. You can leave me a coffee. The link to the leave me a coffee page is in the show notes. You can even click the super thanks button down there by the thumbs up uh, icon if you want to help support the channel through YouTube. So until the next time, continue to wear your clothes in a fashion that when people see you passing them in the street, they turn around as you walk past and say, my God, that guy is a chap. So until the next time, take care. And I will see you very soon.